This episode of the podcast is supported by Audible. You can download and listen to the world's best storytelling. I use it all the time to and from work. You can listen to audiobooks, original series and more on their free app. To get your free 30-day subscription, which includes a free book, click on the link in our show notes and enjoy. Hey folks, welcome to the podcast. Today I had my friend Spud come in again. He is the head coach at CrossFit Tufnell Park and we tackled the difficult topic of diabetes. So we discussed what the differences are between type 1 and type 2 diabetes, what causes it, why it's bad, how you can identify if you have it. And if you do, what are the steps you can put in place to reverse type 2 diabetes? So really interesting and hope you enjoy it. Hey, it's Lewis. Welcome to the podcast. Enjoy our conversations anytime, anywhere. Spud, thanks for coming in again. Thanks for having me. You're one of the select few that's been on twice. <laughs> Not just a Tom, Dick and Harry. No, 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 no. no, no. Great. Appealing to a wide audience of people that are crying out for health fitness and all of that stuff. Glad. So diabetes. Yes. We want to speak about diabetes. It's a scary word. Yeah. Diabetes. What's uh, what's it all about? We just just talking before, about it. Yeah. Um, I think in the public realm, diabetes is potentially quite scary. There's not a lot of understanding around it. Uh, if yeah. you want to talk about it, you probably have to go to a doctor. If you speak to a medical professional and speak to a medical professional, sometimes they give you a lot of words that are difficult to comprehend if you're not a medical professional. I'm not a medical professional. I'm not a nutritionist. I'm in sport and strength and conditioning and health generally. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I've worked with diabetic clients in the past and we've reversed the effects of type 2 diabetes with exercise and diet. Awesome. So how many different types are there? So it's like two. Type 1 and type 2, yeah. yeah. Type 1, in most cases, tends to be hereditary or genetic, and you can't really do anything about it. There's been some very rare cases where type 1 has n- not been type 1 anymore. It's become type 2 diabetes, and then you can sort of treat that. Okay, right. I think there's like three recorded cases ever. And type 1 diabetes is where the pancreas just stops doing its job completely. Stops producing insulin. Yes. Yeah. It's just, it's off. And for that to then kickstart itself back in and start working is phenomenal. And it just, it rarely happens. So right. we say in most cases, if you've got type 1 diabetes, that is something then you will have to live with forever. And it can be treated and there's different things that you can take for it. And there's rumors of like the BCG drug that you can take that will oh, right. help it and yeah. yada, yada, blah, blah, blah. But it's... You've got to manage it. and yeah, it's, it. yeah, and it is manageable, but it's definitely something that is going to be in the forefront of your life forever. You can probably go for like seven to 10 days at a push without insulin. And then you're in trouble. Right. So it's constant. Well, your blood doesn't break down the sugar. Is that right? Yeah. Well, you you, yeah. you stopped producing insulin, yeah. and there's all sorts of yeah, basically sugar sugar management. So essentially, the pancreas tries to create a homeostasis for the body, which is normal. Yeah. It wants to constantly try and keep it normal. So glucose and insulin are you know working with each other and against each other. And if one part of that isn't produced, the whole system breaks down, and then homeostasis isn't normal anymore. And this is where you start to put weight on and eventually get type 2 diabetes which can then turn into type 1 diabetes if it becomes too bad right and type 2 diabetes then yes is caused by what poor diet mostly mostly poor diet so if you're taking in too much uh, carbohydrate so sugars essentially if there's too much carbohydrate going in your body starts to struggle dealing with how much you're putting in because there's only so much insulin your body can produce just like a diet of crisps chips processed yeah. meat yeah or you know what just... bad you know what bad food is if yeah, it's yeah. beige in color it's probably bad that's a refined carbohydrate yeah, yeah. bread sweets sugar and it's refined because it's probably been taken from somewhere and then bleached and then all the goodness taken out and then uh, yeah everything's been removed they've then put sugar in which is great for the brain because the brain then goes wow i need that yeah so a refined carbohydrate can change your mental state it can make you feel really bad about yourself kill your ability to go and want to train so you, you don't wake up in the morning thinking oh i want to go and do something active you think i want to eat i want a cinnamon roll for breakfast and it's a really vicious cycle yeah. really really vicious cycle and it's it's quite difficult to break out of and unfortunately in most cases it takes that doctor to Telling you that you're type 2 diabetic in order to break out of that. How long does it take to like generally it varies? Like when you're young, you're eating bad food. I mean, more recently, there's a lot of cases in young people getting diabetes, but that can be from, like I said before, hereditary. If the parents have lived a bad yeah, lifestyle, parents. if their parents have lived a bad lifestyle, yeah. they then pass in on these, it becomes a genetic disorder because yeah, they've yeah. passed it on to a point. Yeah. It's not all like one size fits all, everything's the same every time, but if your parents have got a bad lifestyle, 
health-wise and the smoking and the drinking and the, the eating poor food, that's going to get passed on from generation to generation. If that's third generation, this young person knows normal as fish and chips every day or yeah, yeah. beige food and eating pizza and bread and so things, it's cheaper as well. Come out the that's way cheaper. That yeah, it's way cheaper. McDonald's. That, and that's yeah. one of the, the main issues. But how do we how do we battle that? What do we do? We can't just say, well, make the good food cheaper. I mean, in London, I mean, there's like loads of like nice uh, fruit and veg things on yeah, the street. I agree. It's like actually quite cheap. Yeah, I agree with that. And Aldi, I think Aldi are opening a new store every week or really? something. And yeah. you know what I love, Aldi? You can get a big bag of like frozen salmon for not a lot of money at all. Yeah. And I usually get all my fresh fruit and veg from the place next to the gym. Fam. Yeah, yeah. I love that place. There Great. isn't anything they don't sell. So I get my protein source, fish or meat from Aldi, or if I'm feeling a bit swanky, I might go to the fishmongers or the meat place across the road. Yeah. Um, but mostly it's fresh fruit and veg from a, a good source. From some, yeah. And it, people have, I've heard people moaning about that place before because- Which place? Fam, next to the gym. Okay, yeah. Is it in Tuffnall Park? Yeah, in Tuffnall Park, yeah. So they say, oh, the, the fruit and the veg, it goes off quite quickly. I'm like, that for me is a good sign because they've not covered it in pesticides crap, in order yeah. to make it last three months. Yeah. If you buy fruit, it's probably pretty much come out of the ground within a week of it being on the shelf. Yeah. If not let a couple of days. So if it- if you're buying it, you should probably just eat it. Absolutely. If you're buying it to store, you're buying the wrong kind of food. Yeah. I went to the great, in Enfield, I can't remember the name of the farm, but this pick your own. And I took my kids there. Awesome. And it was brilliant. Like we picked raspberries, strawberries, beetroot, mm. uh, what else? Like corn on the cob. Brilliant. Awesome. And the kids were like, wow, you know, because they see it on the shelves. Yes. And like, they didn't realize that beetroot is in the earth. And yeah. Like, pick out the oh, earth yeah. and the, it's great and it's also not expensive yes so most people can't be bothered that, I think that's the main thing you can buy fruit and veg but you then have to go and prepare it to eat it And the, yeah. so if you don't have a love for cooking now, like I th- I think I'm really lucky I love preparing food as just uh, Jazz my other half she's very good at preparing food and she's very imaginative with cooking so when she's around we, we eat great and it's very good which is why I'm sad she's going back to China for three months because I know that I'll, I'll be preparing so you're going to like end up drifting into bad eating habits <laughs> not necessarily but it's not going to be as interesting no, no. I tend, if I've got salmon and veg in I tend to just like grill the salmon and, and yeah. put it on green beans and maybe have some brown rice with it so it's a bit more boring I'm just yeah, yeah. not as I'm not as imaginative she's the artist so she's way more imaginative than I am if the food's in I'll just do it in its basic form and, and eat it because yeah, it's yeah. good fuel and don't get me wrong every now and again I might go and get a pizza and, and have a beer with a pal yeah yeah but that's not every day the, and so the diabetes then so why why is it bad and how can you kind of realize that you started to to develop these it's bad because it it's trying its best to kill you um you, it's your body's response to poor diet lack of movement lack of a healthy lifestyle so you put weight on and it's, it's bad weight it's not like you're gaining muscle mass yeah, yeah you're storing fat so you can end up with you know fatty liver disease you can end up with heart disease there's all these things type 2 diabetes is just one of the markers that your body puts up and says listen pal you're not you're not very okay, healthy right. and you start getting obesity obese and yeah yeah you'll things. put weight on and you'll start to struggle with sleep patterns and you'll start to struggle with the way you eat and you start to struggle struggle with the way that you focus on things so school or work may suffer because you've basically got a bad lifestyle crazy i was reading i sent it to you i think it's world, the world economic forum have reduced a report like literally last week yeah and um obesity is classified as a type of malnutrition yes which is interesting because like i don't know even five ten years ago it was all about you know really thin stuck people who were starving yes and you'd always associate them with being malnourished yeah whereas now the obesity has taken over and yeah. that's a bigger problem than starvation yeah and it's a form of malnutrition yeah people so don't- malnutrition doesn't necessarily mean lack of food it just means what you're putting into your body is is bad so by just eating refined carbohydrates if you just ate a meal so this is this is how your body responds to uh, glucose if you just if you had a meal that was just carbohydrates your insulin response would be tenfold that of something that if you were putting protein and fats in because your body can respond to that better. So if you're just eating food that's just like bread and chips and pizza and crisps, it's all these refined carbohydrates, your insulin response is up and then it's down, it's up and then it's down, and it's 10 times that of what it would be if you were eating a balanced meal. Yeah, and you get those kind of spikes in energy. Spikes. and yep, yep, yep. And over time, your body just doesn't like to do that anymore. And there's only so long it can do that. So if you're not looking after it, if you're not using the glucose stores by working out this is where the healthy healthy lifestyle is is a thing on a whole so it's not just necessarily um eating good it's moving often and it doesn't necessarily have to be super high intensity but i think the best way to counterbalance it is uh i think i read a paper recently that said if it was 80 percent of your vo2 max so your 
maximum exertion physically, if it's 80% and above, two to three times a week, that's the perfect way to to sort of... And how long do you need to, what, 20 minutes, half an hour, an hour? If you were to do, let's say for instance, if you were to do four, four CrossFit sessions a week, probably gonna do, so within that hour, you're not beasting yourself for an hour, you're not at 80% for an hour, you're probably at 80% for maybe 10 to 12 minutes. So if you were to do four to five sessions a week of high intensity training, you're more than likely gonna spend 45 minutes a week at that 80%. If you break, it's nothing. If it's nothing, it really is nothing. If you're doing 10 minutes, four times a week, it's nothing. It's literally nothing. There's 24 hours in a day. <laughs> exactly, yeah. And you've got we've got more than four days in a week as well. So it's not like I'm saying go to the gym every day and thrash yourself. Yeah. yeah. But it's more about being conscious of the exertion. So people think, oh, I can, I'm living a healthy lifestyle because I go to a gym and I walk on a treadmill for half an hour. Great. I'm not going to knock the fact that you're physically active, but is that the best way to live that healthy lifestyle? Probably not. You need yeah. to go and actually exert some energy. Go and just you know get sweaty yeah, yeah. Get, get get out of breath and do that for a short amount of time 10 minutes 12 minutes and you will start to feel better but your body will also respond to the food that you're putting in because it uses that as fuel the hardest thing i think people find is actually just getting down there yeah down to the gym that's the biggest hurdle you know for me the, for me i love group, group exercise now. yeah like I, I do a lot of running which is on my own yeah. i'm motivated i enjoy doing it mm-hmm. but the crossfit or any any group exercise you might want to do yeah. whether it's even just like spin class yeah or there's, there's so whatever. many options there's so many options yeah and i will never i know i'm a, an, an advocate for crossfit and i've done this for a very long time and i love this sport i'm also an advocate for movement and if you find something that works well for you physically, do it. Yeah, yeah. The, no, the cardinal rule of training is be consistent with what you're doing. Yeah. And if that's spinning, if that's jujitsu, if it's some sort of group activity where you can go and you've got like-minded individuals around you that give you a high five at the end, great. Because that's going to make yeah. you feel good about what you're doing as well. The group thing is great. Because yes. that really, really motivates you. You, yeah. work, you work a lot harder. Yes. When you like look to your right, your left, and someone's just killing it, and you're like <laughs> about to get sick, and you're like, God, keep going, keep going. <laughs> yeah. I mean, most of the time, I'd have, I'd quit well yeah. before, yeah. but because of what you're doing with other people, it keeps you. Yeah. And then as you get to make friends, they're like, Oh, where were you with like, this week? You can't yeah. be like, Oh, I can't be bothered this week. Yeah. So yeah. again, it encourages you, and you then you get account. into it. You held more accountable. You held to by account. The fact then suddenly, else. before you know it, it's a habit. Yeah. And it's a great habit to yes, get into. It is. It is, and it makes you more aware of those other. Uh, choices that you're making the food that you're eating yeah, yeah. the frequency in it in frequency in which you're eating it true so if you're used to having three pizzas a week you're then like oh i should probably not be eating three pizzas a week i can have one pizza a week yeah just- so just by having that group around you or who are making healthy lifestyle choices it's helping you make that healthy lifestyle choice yeah. as well how do you go about if you actually have type 2 diabetes yeah. so you've just you've had a bad lifestyle yeah whatever how can you go about reversing it and getting back on track some people may say stop eating crap and start moving it's really not that simple i mean it is yeah but as a human being to go completely cold turkey on something that you've been so reliant on for such a long time and it will be a long time because you don't get type 2 diabetes overnight yeah, yeah. there'll be other marker points that pop yeah. up you've gained a lot of weight you've, you're not very happy with your own physical well-being um essentially try and slowly wean yourself off the bad stuff like i said if it's beige in color it's probably not the best for your body try to replace it there's there's so many templates online that you can follow that is just protein fat vegetables good carbohydrates and that is what your body needs to fuel if you're putting the right fuel in you can then use that in any sort of physical exercise regime start with walking on a treadmill for 30 minutes it's so simple. There'll be a cheap gym around the corner from you. You don't have to go crazy and spend a load of money on a premium fitness model. Yeah. Go and do something physically active. Run around the park. Walk around the park. Get a dog. They're going to want you to take them out a couple of times a day. That's very true. You're going to have to stand That's up and put your shoes on and leave the house and do something physical. That can be the Kickstarter. Yeah. So it really doesn't have to be, I need to be super fit and strong in order to go to the gym and do these things. Yeah, yeah. Do something simple. Even if you're like working at a desk all day, you can always get up and walk around. You can. You can't go out, go and get you, find a spot on Google Maps that's half a mile away for lunch. Then go to the place that's just outside the office. Yeah, if you've yeah, got that true. time, walk to the place, eat the food, and then walk back again. Yeah. There's so many ways to get some simple physical activity. And then that should, if you're thinking about it, if you're conscious about having type 2 diabetes, you are probably, you're going to go one of two ways. You're going to either give up and be like, no, oh, well, I've got it now, so I just need to live with it. Don't do that. The other way is you're going to be really aware of it and you're going to try and reverse it. So you are going to make more informed choices on what you eat and how often you move. Starting with that 
walking on a treadmill or doing something physical activity some sort of phys- physical activity will then grow into something else yeah you'll buy a gym membership or you'll go and do some sort of community based fitness you'll find your local crossfit gym you'll find your local jiu jitsu dojo or something whatever you fancy learn a new sport join a football team and on the heath at the weekend you know yeah there's, yeah there's so many options it feels like people are getting more healthy but then you look, read this report and and uh you know the biggest drain in the NHS is diabetes, yep. obesity, and stuff. Yeah, um, it's just it's just too crazy. Yeah, yeah. You you might look around and see the healthy people, but that's mainly because you don't look around and and see the unhealthy people because they're probably I am. At, at home. Yeah, <laughs> probably. <laughs> yeah, you don't you won't see them in the gym because they're they're at home no. or in the pub. You know the pubs at the weekend. It's also a bit are scary, full. I guess. Like if you're really out of shape, the thought of going down to the gym. You know, you walk into the gym and everyone's yeah. seems pretty fit. Yeah. Well, if we you walk in. We spoke this afternoon about you potentially starting Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. Yeah. I've done that for a while, maybe 12, 18 months, something like that. And I'm I'm from a background that is like I'm ex-military. I've got loads of confidence. My job is to talk to big groups of people and teach them. The first time I walked into a Brazilian jiu-jitsu place, I was so scared. So even somebody that comes from a fitness background that understands my capacity in the fitness world, who's very confident, was still like, I was oh, yeah, yeah. Was very scared on, about on me? the first day. I'm and I'm saying this, to you, we, oh, yeah. we go down to the jiu-jitsu place yeah. and you're still going to be scared. Absolutely, yeah. So Ex-military it, people, yeah. know how to fight. Yeah, exactly, yeah. And then you're like, very this, quickly, is, this is day one. Yeah. Very quickly, you'll become more confident because you'll yeah. have people around you that you recognize every time that you go down there. The movements aren't so foreign anymore because that's you, that's just you, the way your body learns. If you can teach your central nervous system something, it will then remember it. Yeah. Keep doing that consistently and you'll become happy and confident in no time. And that works across the board. Oh, yeah. That, Like you said, getting into the gym is the biggest hurdle. Massive. Getting over that first hurdle is literally the most difficult one. Yeah, when yeah. you're in there yeah the workout's going to be hard but the endorphin release after that is going to make you feel so good about it you're going to want to do it again true true just get over that first hurdle and what about like GPs door. and stuff so is there also mm. medication you can take because mm. first step one presumably is <sighs> I'm not feeling great about this myself is a, this is a deep dark hole booking the GP appointment three yeah. weeks later <laughs> I, would, I would say get in front of a medical professional by all means because they're going to be able to diagnose whether you've got diabetes or not yeah. is the advice that they give you going to be the best long term some would say yes some would say no why would they say uh, no the last time that I had a type 2 diabetic client she was 72 years old she was on a walking stick she had a stennis stair lift at home and she couldn't get up and down the stairs she was struggling she was obese she was in a lot of trouble um she looked 92 if i'm honest not 72 her doctor was saying don't worry about physical activity don't worry about uh, the healthy diet just take the meds which for uh. me is very scary because there's there's medical professionals who are potentially dishing out the wrong advice in order to sell medication maybe yeah potentially yeah yeah yeah, yeah. maybe yeah yeah so in other like- cases you may find a gp that is a health enthusi- enthusiast a fitness enthusiast and they'll say, change your diet, go to the gym. So they're not all so holistic. No. It's like, let's treat the symptoms now like anywhere, rather than though, the cause you can, of... You can go to a uh, hundred different CrossFit gyms, you're going to get a different product. Yes, CrossFit is the core being of the place, but you're going to get something different in everyone. Yeah, yeah. Just yeah. like your doctors. But if you know, if they say to you, you have type 2 diabetes, here's a, a range of uh, different methods in order to help treat that. Always bear in mind that with type 2 diabetes, you will feel better if you work out and if you eat good. Yeah, yeah. It's a base level. The nutrition, your nutrition is like, imagine like a, a, a pyramid. The nutrition is always the base of that. So if they're saying, here's the medication, don't worry about a good diet. Yeah. I would say still implement a good diet. If they, if they recommend the meds, potentially take them. But the nutrition is, is key. Change the way you eat. Yeah. But I mean, if you've got it and you're in this like, I don't know, mental state of, yeah. I don't know what to do. I'm feeling bad. Yeah. And the GPs, if they're not giving you a holistic view hmm. i mean because you sometimes maybe you need to see speak to speak to someone psychologist mm-hmm. yep. then you need some medication to sort yourself out immediately yeah. then you need someone to because it's easy to say eat well yes but if you're not used to eating well yeah you've got no idea no you know you just often need someone to just be like this is what you need to do yes here's a plan yeah yeah something simple to start with that's for sure but and like you said you may have other people around you I think if you're in that situation you're not just going to have the doc you're going to have other people around you with with some information and if you don't go and speak to somebody else yeah yeah. don't just take one person's advice because you also have to take responsibility for yourself you absolutely have to but like you said that's not always that easy yeah absolutely yeah yeah. that's always not that easy and um, if you think of there's, there's potential traits of a like an addictive personality they're addicted to the food that they're eating yes yeah um 
it is an addiction. Yeah, I mean, like sugar, the mouth pleasure of a nice pizza. Well, and just chocolate, just sugar. Yeah, like your sugar. your brain's response to that is like a class A drug. Yeah, I need that again. I need that sensation. That was really good. Keep doing that. And if your personality sort of enables that as well, it is really difficult to then change this. It's a massive lifestyle change, and it's a big shock to the system. So. Again, we go back to that first hurdle. It's the biggest one. It's I know, it's not, a lot not of just people. physically, but like the way you eat. It's a big hurdle just cutting these things out. Mental side, it's yeah. massively. I mean, yeah. even if I if I walk past this, this sweets and chocolates thing in in like Sainsbury's, yeah. it's calling. It's calling yeah. for me. Yeah, I just want to grab a Snickers. It's only a, it's only a Snickers. It's just a quick one. Yeah. It's fine. I eat well all the other time. Just, yeah, yeah, yeah. Just suddenly you have oh, one I've, every day. I've, I've had a Snickers every day. Yeah. Yeah, and then it's like, and then you're like, oh, my my favorite shirt doesn't fit me anymore. That's the market. Happens point. quick. It does happen quick. It really does. Because then you can, then that spiral begins. Ah, uh, well, you, it's you okay. can spiral. Also, the other big thing, I mean, being in an office environment yeah. is dangerous. I mean, we're we're like all pretty healthy. Yes. However, there's always a little cookie or mm. some chocolates mm. or someone's gone away. Yeah. You know. So, and if you're in a bigger office, yeah, there's it's always some difficult. donuts knocking around. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, it is it is difficult, and I'm not, and I would never say never eat a donut because those things are awesome. Oh yeah, <laughs> but it's just moderation. Yeah, yeah, no, it's yeah, yeah. If you can, if you can build that baseline of good nutrition to start with, you can afford a donut and a slice of pizza every now and again. Yeah, don't get me wrong. If if it's Saturday and my pal texts me, do you want to go for a beer? I'm going for a beer. I'm not. It's not 100 percent healthy, and yeah, I'm not completely ripped. I'm not a fitness model, but I understand what I need to do in order to keep my body moving, so that when I train, I'm functional. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm good because you want to have like really long, healthy, active life. Yeah. And at some point, you need to invest in yourself. And you'd rather do it up front Going than trying to correct. Though, that's really important that you say that. I want a long and healthy lifestyle. You want a long and healthy lifestyle. Not everybody does. That's another issue. Surely everyone does. No, not everyone does. Some people will be quite happy just saying, I'm going to go to the pub every night and I'm going to smoke cigarettes. I'm going to eat poor. Um, and that that's a, a mental game, trying to get through that. So True. when, when yeah. I say, don't just take your doctor's advice... It may be worth sitting down with somebody that you can just talk to and they can listen to the things you're saying and they can help you mentally as well as physically. I guess if you want to. If you yeah. want to, yeah. You need to want to do this. If you're being told to do it and you don't want to do it, it just won't happen. And it's yeah. going to become a chore. It's going to be horrible. So changing your mindset to want to live a bit longer, I think, is the key. A lot of it's mental health as well. Even In a big city, it's quite easy to be pretty lonely massively you know you might not speak to your neighbours I agree with that everyone's doing different things different busy, times busy going different directions it's all, busy it's all very fast yeah and I think this goes back to like the community based fitness if that is the only time you get to spend where you're not in work and you're around people that are like minded because they all like doing the same thing as you excellent oh it's great I mean also I mean I I bump into people from, from the gym on the train yeah I'm like hey man how you doing yeah I bumped into a guy last I did it last Friday I was like where are you man oh yeah I'm supposed to come you know yeah. so like you just encourage people it's nice yeah. you meet people in, in your area and they don't ignore you if you see somebody from the gym on the train no, they're like, you, hey, you how you doing? You have a chat. You speak yeah. about CrossFit. Yeah. I've got no idea what most of these people do outside of the gym. Yeah, yeah. Um, at all. Um, and it's great. But then I, I walk back home and there's a pub on the corner of my road. Mm. And I, I see the same people there yeah. every night yeah. with a pint. Yeah. So this is pizza. what I'm saying about wanting to live a long and healthy lifestyle. If you yeah. go in there and try and preach to them about long and healthy lifestyles, nobody... But they're feeling... It's, it's interesting. That's their, like, community thing, right? Yes. Yeah. Like, they're known in the pub. Yeah. People from the area communicate, and pubs are, are great for like community and stuff. Yeah. But when you're having a beer or two well, it's daily. every night, yeah, yeah, and it's, it's different. Then At the back of their minds isn't going to be I want to live longer. It's more about the short term. I can see my friends. I can have a drink. I can feel good in the very short term. Yeah. And like I said at the start of the conversation, it's unfortunate that it will get to a point where the body will flag something up. Yeah. Because interesting. Because if you're in that state of mind, you either go towards alcohol, yeah, and comfort food, or if you can ma- make it towards health and fitness. Yes, I'm obviously much much better. Yeah, but you it find is. it's yeah. people go better either way. But it's having the having the conversation. If, if we're chatting now and there's somebody listening who thinks I know who that is, I have a person in my group of friends or my family that is that person. Maybe chat with them, just talk to them. Do you want to live longer? Do you want to have a healthier lifestyle? And if yeah. you say no, try and figure out why. <laughs> What's going on, man? Just have a conversation. It's so easy. Yeah, yeah, and it might feel weird at first trying to break the ice, especially if it's somebody that you know, if it's somebody that's really close to you. Yeah, that's not a conversation you've probably had with them before. 
If it's a mate, you can be like, dude, so it's You'd be now. surprised, though, especially like groups of men. They don't talk about that stuff. No, that's true. Starting to a bit more, but you're A right. little bit. There's a bit more awareness around it. Yeah, yeah. But realistically, if you're in the pub, you're probably chatting about this, that, and the other. You're not going to go, how's your mental health? <laughs> no, no, no. You're just not. And you sh- it, I'm not saying do it in that setting, but by all means, sit down with a friend and be like, uh, maybe I think you're drinking too often, or do you want to go to the gym? What are you doing it for? You know? yeah, yeah. Do you want to live longer? Yeah. If not, man, live fast, die young. You know. No, you're right. I've, I've, cool I've got, do, I've got can... a really good mate of mine, and he he was just like, I want to I want to get fit, and he signed up for the Royal Parks Half Marathon. Great. And I was like, if you train and you make it there, I'll do it with you. Great. So in three weeks, we're going to be running it together. Excellent. And it's it's great. Yeah. And we went we went for a run together last week. Yeah. We got a couple of other mates in. Awesome. And running with friends. Yes. It's, it's great. Like we were chatting it around. It really is. You forget that you're exercising and inverted yeah. commas. Yeah. And it's quite social. Yeah. And it's not so daunting. Mm. It's good. If you can get a little group together, yeah. it just helps you, encourages you to, do, to get fit. And that's it. And even if you think that you having a conversation with the friend is weird, you could just say, I'm going for a run. You fancy it? You don't even have to approach it. You don't even have to talk about the elephant in the room. You can just say, I'm going to go for a run. And then when they say, no, I don't fancy it, then you can be like, well, why? Yeah. Just come for a jog. I'm going to go around the block or I'm going to go down to the, the local gym. We're going to do some bits down there. You know, if, if you think there's somebody there and they, there's, there's parts of their lifestyle that are sort of flagging up to you that it's not the healthiest, you can always have a chat. There's not many people that will just go, do you know what? No, leave me alone. Stop talking to me about it. No, they'll say that probably go, time. well, I yeah, time, yeah, I'm too time, busy well, at there's, work. There's, some, there's something that's going to stop them from doing it. Yeah, yeah. If you know them as a person, if you are close to them, you should be able to at least chat to them about it. True. If not, then try it the second time. Keep pestering them. Keep pestering them. Eventually, they might break. All Get right, them I'll, down. Come, I'll come for a jog. We'll go for a jog around the back. It's fine. Yeah. There's so many members that we have in the gym that say, "I want to, I want to bring my other half down." They can see that I'm making great changes physically and mentally. I'm much happier. My work is improving. Yada 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 yada. And they want to try and make the same changes, but they find that it really difficult to get through the door. It's hard. I mean, my my wife does it, yeah. and uh, she's a physio. She's quite into health and fitness. But her first thought, first thought was, I know everyone's going to be really fit, really yeah. strong. Yeah. You know, you get a little bit shy. Yeah. It's quite intimidating. It's very intimidating. You know, it's, it's yeah. I mean, you go in and you see people smashing out some pull-ups. There's or people like Lewis some, in there with his shirt well, off. Well, you know. You know, doing pull-ups. Hair everywhere. Yeah, it's, uh, it can be pretty scary if you've not been in, a, in an environment They're really like scary. That before. And you don't realise that you can do variations of these things. Yes. Um, Adaptability is yeah, not yeah. something that's openly spoken about in the gym. You can no. adapt to everything to yeah. whatever whatever level you are at. Then the other problem is like social media. Only really see photos of, of like ripped. Yeah, like you always need to bear in mind social media. You, you are seeing somebody show real. They're not going to show you the bad stuff. They're just going to show, show you the good stuff. Yeah, yeah. And this goes back to my when we were talking about the the type two diabetic client that I had. who was seventy two, and we eventually, with good diet and exercise, we overcame. And she stopped taking insulin, and she stopped using a walking stick, and she eventually Amazing. had the stennis of taken out of the house because she no longer needed it. Yeah. This was like 2013 I think and she's living a happier healthier lifestyle now amazing she's not That's... obese anymore she's not taking medication anymore and she's going out and walking the dog three times a day and it's it's wonderful but to get over that first hurdle of wow this thing is trying to kill me I'm not the healthiest that, that I could be and it's I can genuinely see problems with my lifestyle. It's a big hurdle. It is, and you have to really. Cause it's quite. It's quite a scary journey. Yeah, it is. You've got to love the journey. Yeah, because nothing good comes without effort. To start with, get on the journey. You just got to get on it. Get and on. You got to then enjoy the pain. Yeah. Enjoy it. Yeah. Enjoy sweating. And, and if it's not enjoying the pain and the sweat, it's enjoying the the sensation after you've finished. So you feel. You do unbelievably feel good when yeah. you walk out yeah and if you're doing it regularly enough that is your that's the homeostasis of your body that's normal yeah, your yeah. body is used to that and it likes that so it's it then becomes more difficult for you to eat bad food because you know in your brain that actually this is bad yeah. it's a treat so it actually once you've started it and you've got the ball rolling and it's really rolling it's almost impossible to break out of that unless it unless it's a conscious effort yeah yeah, yeah. i'm going to just yeah. stop going to the gym and i want to eat bad food how many people say that to themselves? There can't be many. Once you get into it, you feel just, you just feel amazing. Great, yeah. More energy, yes. more positive, yeah. the whole thing. And it's not even like it's got a short lifespan. I've been doing this for a really long time. I found CrossFit in 2006, and I'm still doing it. So, it's, yeah, I've had peaks and troughs in my performance, and yeah. I tried competing in CrossFit for a little while, did some local competitions, and then opened my first gym and realized that actually my love in this sport is teaching people how to do it yeah. and teaching people how to live a, a healthier lifestyle because of this and I've just I, I still work out 
I don't work out as much as I used to, um, just because I think three times a week for me is enough. I try and do other sports. I like to surf. I like skateboarding. It's active. I like going to jiu-jitsu, it? doing something physically active. We're going to go hiking up in the Peak District this weekend. and Nice. You know, just be, be active. Do something with your body, because your body is awesome. Yeah. It can do so many different things. But how can people get in touch with you if they want to start to... Instagram, Metcon Spud. Email, metconspud at gmail.com if they want to ping us a message. Yeah. I'm always I'm I'm open to anybody reaching out. Awesome. And even if it's just how do I start? What yeah. is spinach? <laughs> <laughs> Somebody asked me that once. There's no there's literally no such thing as a stupid question. What's spinach? People are always talking about spinach. Yeah, it's just nice to have like a safe kind of environment to yeah. ask questions. I mean Yeah, and it will always be anonymous as well. You don't have to be, you know, I'm not gonna trawl through your Instagram feed and try and find where you live to get you on a run. If you wanna reach out and just say, What do I need to do to eat better? I'm always happy to answer questions. Yeah. So just ping me a message. Awesome. Thank you very much. Thank you for having me again. Pleasure. Hey folks, thanks for listening. Don't forget to subscribe in all the usual places. Bye.